This is a Sony APR5000 machine. It looks very similar to the Sony Dash machine you've seen in my other videos. In fact, the Sony Dash is actually based on this recorder. Uh, there is a PCM3202 uh, machine which is identical to this except twice as deep. It's a digital version of this machine. Sony brought out the first digital recorders in the U-Matic, uh, I think it was a U800 machine. It was the first machine they adapted to, to digital. Then they adapted one of these into digital, which was more successful due to the fact that you could splice the tape as you could do on one of these uh, analog machines. This machine is analog. It's um, sl uh, slightly different to the other machine. It's got time code and everything like that. So. When you press play on this machine, it'll read time code. If I reset the counter here, we have the counter down here. If I zoom into this, you can see it's reading zero now. If I press time code display, you can see that that's flashing. Now, if I press play, you'll notice the meter up here. This third meter is the time code signal strength. Press play, you'll see that it's picked up and this counter is now reading 17 minutes 35 seconds. Which was when this was recorded. This particular tape is a recording from Granada Television. It's a play. Now the way this was stored, um, the way the um, Granada do and the way the BBC sometimes did was they'll store the tape wound onto the uh, the take up reel. So when this is stored away, the tape is actually not in a suitable position to be played straight away. You have to rewind the tape and then start uh, playing it uh, for your production. The reason for this was due to print through. Um, the myth about storing a tape oxide out and things like that is, is, is total dribble. There's, it doesn't make any difference. The tape will still get print through. But what uh, what the BBC orchestral companies and Granada worked out was that if you store the tape on the take up reel rather than the supply reel, if I take that off time code, it'll go faster. If you supply, if you leave it on the supply reel rather than the take up reel. Uh, if you do get print through, it would happen after the performance started. So, which means you don't get a sort of like a ghostly echo at the beginning of the tape of the um, recording previous to. Now, Sony weren't uh, known for doing professional reel to reel tape recorders. Um, their main area was video recorders, Betamax, uh, Betacam. Umatic and things like that. They did a few cameras as well. This machine here was one of their very only sort of analog large format tape recorders. They did make a couple of machines such as the APR 2003 which was a, a battery portable Nagra rival. This machine will take up to 12 inch reels. Which not all the machines around at a particular time would do. The Studer A807 wouldn't do, but then again, at the same time the Studer A807 was around, so was the um, A80, which is the machine beside this. Concentrate with every thought you think. A 
upon the recitation we're about to Now the recorder has got an overhead bridge. As mentioned before, we have the time code to signal strength, we have the right and left channels, and we have the chord mode enabled and disabled. Like the studios, we've got uncalibrate, and then we've got the different repros. Either you can repro from the playback head or the record head, or monitor what's coming in. This uh, function can only be done in playback or if you're recording on the other channel. Um, let me put it into play. So now I can repro from the record head and the replay head, and you can hear there. An echo. So this is actually coming from the record head. And then the replay head. And the recorder has other functions to it as well. Uh, for instance, you've got a shuttle control. You've got um, when you put it into play mode, although you can't see it on the vi well, you can just about see it on the video here. We have two hum shields. You can knock them out like that, exposing the heads. In spool mode, you can drop the tape lifters. Although the machine seems to mute when you do it, so I don't see the point of that. Um, there you go. So you can do it. That will be used for very quick editing, but when you use a shuttle control... Turn that down a bit. The sound's there at all times. This recorder's got quite a, um, a sort of um, variable speed control on it, uh, plus and minus 50%. So, you press the speed control, numbers come up here, you type in how much you want 50% and then you press it again press various speed to turn it off you put in another number minus 50 You can also, at the bottom counter, you can put in a time. So, if, say for instance, if we reset the counter, I want this machine to go, say, 30 seconds ahead. Um, or 23 seconds ahead. And press locate. And tell it to play as soon as it gets there. Um, you've got three speed controls on here, which the machine stops as soon as you select them. The recorder keeps the tape tension on at all times. So you can move the reels backwards and forwards, whether or not that's for that purpose, I don't think so, but it will do that. To be able to splice the tape, you need to press the stop button. Oh, sorry, the edit button. Now the tape comes away from the heads. You could then cut the tape. And once you've done your editing, your splicing, you could then you then press stop, and it pulls the tape back to the heads. The other thing about it in edit mode, you press play, and this is what's called tape dump, where the tape basically goes all over the floor. Pressing stop and then stop again will bring up the tension of the reels.